To Alul, never before has so much been expected of the human being, with the exception of slaves and warriors. Humanity is crushed under the technical mechanism, whether they be white collar or blue. The work of today to Alul is a modern war of nervous tension, where man is merely an object and victim to permanent panic, an alienated machine of non-traditional means. Man sits at his desk for eight hours a day, living in a crowded, polluted, and overpopulated place, psychologically manipulated to maintain a sense of morale and thus ensure human stability. People are doped and drugged up on psychological propaganda. Technique brings with it its own ideology in this sense, so as to keep man motivated, dispersed through mainstream media to become public opinion. Such psychological techniques ensure the maximum yield by exploiting all human psychic forces. Technique, we see, is successful at worming its way into the deepest recesses of the human mind. It morphs our physical environment and our social milieu. Man is fractured and fragmented, lost from the primary and traditional elements of life, where the mechanical has replaced the material. Man cannot fully adopt to the machine. He merely subsists in such a setting. Even our household furnishings have been mechanized for new non-traditional functions, which correlates to encompass and include numerous mass-produced products, which the consumer must acquire and operate. Even our tastes have been modified by technique, going back to the example of mass-produced bread as we previously discussed. Transportation similarly takes us anywhere and everywhere, and so, no longer locked to small communities, we become cosmopolitan citizens of the world. Everywhere and nowhere is our home now. With population increases, solitude no longer becomes possible. Man expands his space through technology, but in doing so, leaves himself nowhere to escape to. Technique has even modified human time. Man went by nature's time, that of the sun, before shifting to the clock tower bell until it was finally divided into specific hours, minutes, and seconds. Time became an abstract measure, cut off from the rhythms of nature, and thus became quantified, and life itself became measured by the machine. How we eat, work, and sleep all comes from the dictations of the clock. Even our motions and the ways in which we move become dictated by machines, where we must adjust our functions to keep up with its flow. Alul points to the example of an elderly person trying to keep up with the flow along a street crosswalk. Man is thus fitted with a psychological shock absorber to aid in his assimilation to such a society through technique itself so as to further push him along the path of progress. Man, in living in a mass society which has been shaped through techniques he cannot consciously control, loses his sense of equilibrium. The ideals of society do not coincide with his own, leaving him alienated and killing off any sense of community. Modern man is left now as a neurotic. Either man remains what he was, and thus unadapted, is discarded, or he adapts himself through psychic mutation to become a mass man. The individual thus becomes no different from the collective. Since this strains and stresses man's productive output, techniques must be used to mitigate this strain on man. These are what Alul calls human techniques, which leave him better adapted to his society. The interests of man and technique must correspond for the sake of efficiency. To quote Alul, there is an effort to refine our knowledge of human techniques so as to bridge the gap between man and machine. This is referred to as humanizing the techniques. When man is considered into the equation along with his fears and phobias, it allows for the creation of technical humanism. In addition, man will be put at the center of technique itself preserving some sense of his unity from his otherwise fractured sense of self. There is also the prospect of the Superman to Alul, stemming from chemical or embryonic conditioning, something similar to transhumanism or perhaps brave new world aspirations. All this is done, of course, to prevent the human being from burnout, overload, or fatigue, which would only increase inefficiency. Thus, when we talk of this humanism, it is not a moral humanism. Since man is part of the problem linked to inefficiency, his function must be fixed. Humanism thus just means fixing man's internal mechanisms to function efficiently. Of course, for purposes of propaganda, it will be easy for the technicians to use this to claim that they actually care about humanity, when in fact the techniques are in place to fuel efficiency.
For a lul, the problem with this is that we have no way to know with certainty that technique might not turn around and mutilate and suppress and exploit man for oppressive purposes someday. Just because technique assists us because it needs us currently to survive doesn't mean it will for the future. The only law technique follows, after all, is that of its own autonomy. As such, any real or genuinely meaningful talks of technical humanism proves impossible. It's just another one of technique's current necessities, after all. Welcome to the Psychic Wars.